So let's have some fun and design an amplifier. So where do we start? Well, we have to think about the specification and uh, look at the spec, choose the the right design, the the right sort of amplifier topology to meet those uh, the specification in the design. So we know we're given the spec as follows. It's going to have a supply rail of 10 volts. The transistor that we're, we're given has a beta characteristic of 200. Um, the IC quiescent, so this is the current that is drawn when we, when we don't input any audio signal into the amplifier. This is specified. It wants to be less than uh, 2 milliamps. And it needs to be class A. So uh, lowest distortion and uh, the Z in, the input impedance, wants to be larger than, say, 10K. And the Z out needs to be smaller than uh, 150 ohms. OK, so this is our amp spec. So before we delve into this, let's just recap on the, um, the kind of the working specifications of a BJT, bipolar junction transistor. So it looks like this. Collector, emitter and base. This is an NPN, NPN transistor. Um, if it was a PMP, then this arrow will be uh, heading the other in the opposite direction. So the things we know in the the beta characteristic is determined by the um, IC divided by IB. Essentially, that's our beta characteristic. So we can therefore say that the um, IC current is proportional to beta times the IB. VBE. So this is a forward bias PN junction here, generally, uh, when, we're, when we're operating it in that mode. And we say that um, VBE is approximately 0.65 volts when it's in its forward bias um, operation. So the volts. VCE, the voltage across the transistor. Well, this varies. It can be anywhere we want, depending on how we, we bias the transistor. But ideally, we want that to be sat um, at approximately half our uh, supply rail. So that's, well, that's, that's what we're going to aim for, I mean, in particularly for um, this, this class A operation. So this we're going to aim for this. Um, VC sat is often specified in, in data sheets. It's going to be sort of maybe a rate, you know, it's going to it's going to bottom out around, uh, say, 0.2 volts. But we're not interested in that. This is the VC because we're not going to operate in saturation mode. Um, or cutoff mode, we're, we're going to operate in the active region. So we're going to choose the point where we, we want this to, uh, to to live, if you like. Um, so we have VBE, we've got our beta, and we've got our VCE. Uh, okay, oh, the further thing. So the input impedance, so what was the intrinsic impedance of this uh, transistor? Well, it's determined by the, um, the IEQ, if you like. So this is ICQ. IBQ, so these quiescent uh, points. So this is this is if the amplifier is just sat and we're not inputting any audio in. So this is the DC characteristic rather than the AC characteristic. Um, the intrinsic, what we call the little RE. Sometimes you see this as RE one, but we're just going to call it RE. Is equal to twenty six millivolts divided by the IEQ. Ah, uh, what else do we need to know in terms of design equations? Well, that, just the, the operation of the transistor at this point, as long as you've got your head around these or you remember these uh, key values, then it's a, it's a good starting point. So our amplifier, we've got a 10 volt uh, supply that we can deal with. The amp itself uh, needs to draw quiescent current, ICQ, uh, less than... 2 milliamps. The gain of the amplifier needs to be approximately 10. The Z in we're going to aim to achieve greater than 10 kilo ohms. Z out needs to be less than 150 ohms. So those are our sort of spec and obviously 
we're told that it needs to be exhibit class A operation. So let's draw a common emitter amplifier in sort of a class A arrangement. That's our VCC. We're going to use potential divider bias. Okay. That is our output. Let's call this R1. Let's call this R2. Let's call this big RE so it differentiates from little RE. And this is RC. All right. So what do we know about this? Oops. There we go. Okay. In. What do we know about this? amplifier well we know theoretically if we derive the uh the, the gain um the voltage gain of this amplifier we will get now a is it minus rc it's an inverting amplifier divided by re that's an approximate value RE has uh, many advantages in this arrangement. It can um, be used to sort of increase the input impedance of the amplifier. Also offers a little bit of control in terms of uh, feedback stability, temperature stability for the amp itself. So you might often you sometimes see designs where there, there isn't any big RE, but in, in under DC operating conditions, it's always good to to have it in there. You may see sometimes as well uh, systems where this is bypassed like so so in the ac condition we get um a large gain because this is bypassed and 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 it therefore approximates to minus rc over little re so we get a uh, big gain um however un under the dc uh, conditions it's important that this sort of um controls our minimum gain if you like and then uh, also offers some stability so where to start with this so we want the amplifier to operate in class A. Now class A, in essence, says this point here needs to be sat at approximately half. So VCEQ needs to be half VCC or approximately half VCC. What that will enable is full scale swing up to the supply voltage itself and a negative swing uh, down to approximately the VCE uh, sat point, which is going to be about 0.2 volts. So, okay, how, what, what do we do to start? Well, um, let's say we know that the IC Q needs to be less than Two milliamps and if we want this to be half then we must have five volts across RC so the other five volts or approximately five volts is across the transistor in this uh, big RE here so if we just say okay well let's choose a value that, that uh, satisfies this ICQ if we say RC is 5k makes the maths easier 5k uh, 5 volts divided by 5k um, because this is our 10 volt rail remember um, gives us a icq equal to 1 milliamp okay so we have the uh, 1 milliamp quiescent current flowing down here so therefore this approximate value of, of ieq is also going to be um, one milliamp in our system so one milliamp there we know that the voltage gain of this system is given by the minus rc over re and we need a voltage gain of 10 and we know rc is uh, we've chosen rc to be 5k which therefore means that re we could choose as a starting value of 500 ohms. If we know that there's 500 ohms here and we've got 1 milliamp flowing through it, then
then we're going to get about 0 0.5 volts here obviously the rest is going to be dropped uh, 4.5 volts dropped across the transistor and 5 volts here so we can knowing that there's 0.65 volts there then we can say there's a approximately 1.15 volts at this point here that we need to aim for we've not we've not calculated r1 and r2 yet but we we're working sort of from the the front of the amp backwards here so in order to start working out the values for the r1 and r2 we're interested now in this ibq well we know the relationship between the icq and ibq it's simply the ICQ divided by the beta characteristic. And we know ICQ now has to be 1 milliamp, so therefore the IBQ that we have in our system is going to be 5 microamps. Okay. Now, what we aim to do, we, we, need, we need to have a sort of a... Um, I like to call it a, a sort of stable VBB here, uh, the base voltage. And in order to achieve that, we need sort of a, a current that's flowing through R2. But what, what to choose the current? Well, if we, as a general rule of thumb, again, as a design equation, if we make this 10 times the IBQ, that means we'll have flowing through IR2 50 microamps. This gives us adequate uh, current to give us a, a, a relatively stable and, and um, uh, sort of a strong uh, pull down effect at this point here. So um, we can therefore predict the current flowing through here is going to be 55 microamps due to Kirchhoff's current law. So have we satisfied everything at this point? So one thing, one thing that remains, we need to calculate the uh, values of R2 and R1. Now, if you just, uh, we, we know the currents, we know the supply voltages, uh, we know the voltage that we, we desire at this point, so it's relatively easy to calculate those. If you know this voltage, you know the current, then you can find uh, R2, and likewise the difference in that voltage, 10 minus uh, uh, this voltage gives you the voltage across R1, you know the current, so therefore you can calculate what it is. So if you do the calculations, you should find R1 approximates to around 160K and R2 is going to be approximately 24K. So we have a value for R1, we have a value for R2, we have a value for RC and we have a value for RE. And hopefully at that point, that's going to satisfy all our um, uh, design criteria, but we need to check first whether they, they do or not. So we've got minus RC over RE gives us the gain. We know that that's going to give us uh, 10 because it's 5K divided by 500 is 10. Input impedance, how do we calculate the input impedance? The input impedance is, is, is what we see um, looking into this system. And now in order to look at that, we need to think about the, uh, the effectively, the, you know, what, what is seen in, its, in the AC uh, model. And what we see when we when we do the AC analysis is the R1 and the R2 effectively end up in parallel, and that's in parallel with this uh, little RE and the um, the big RE uh, resistors. So and the way we calculate looking in on the with respect to the AC characteristics, we'll see that the R1 and the R2 uh, are in parallel. So we say Z in is equal to R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with. Um, we've got this R, little re, big re, so plus big re, and this we also have to take into account the uh, beta plus one characteristic of the um, of the currents that are flowing through the the current gain, if you like. So you could potentially approximate that to beta. Um, and you could say, okay, well, you know, do we neglect little re so it becomes uh, uh, you know, a little bit, you know, we're approximating all the time, so it's a bit a bit dangerous to do that, but um, you might see some texts that explain, uh, show the equation like this, but for completeness, this is the full full equation, which takes into account the, uh, the quiescent uh, emitter current. 
So if you tap that into your calculators, you should see our Z in approximate to around 17.429 ohms or there or thereabouts, um, which which is greater than 10 kilo ohms. So we've satisfied the input impedance, which is awesome. So we've got the gain. We've satisfied the quiescent uh, collector current. We've satisfied the input impedance. What else to do? Well, when we look at the AC model of this circuit, we'll see that the 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 output impedance is actually reflected by or dictated by this RC resistor. So in this case, the Z out is going to be approximately five kilo ohms, which is a bit of a disaster because Z out we needed to be uh, smaller than 150 ohms. So we'll look at that next.